This is the still excellent, highly recommended Shellback Tactical Plate Carrier. I reviewed that about two years ago, I think. Love it. And there's lots of great plate carriers out there. It's not just Shellback Tactical or Tactical Assault Gear that is tag. But these are some of my favorite. They're US produced, they're lightweight, they're trim. Lots of features. Go reference a review if you're interested. And as awesome as it is, and it is awesome, what makes it even better is body armor. In fact, when you see me in front of the camera in a nut and fancy run and gun, I am always wearing soft body armor, 3A variety. This battery isn't dead. I do that primarily at the range for safety, believe it or not. I don't know if I ever told you guys that, but I do. Um, I have had it here in the Nut and Fancy Project where guests have muzzled me in a bad way. <laughs> yeah, to a point where I was kind of scared. And so that 3A armor protects my vitals during shoots around people, uh, I don't know, that for whatever reason they oh stumble and they fall, Shut which up. has happened. Oh my gosh, uh, so I didn't show you on camera because it would have created too much drama. But yeah, I got muzzled. Uh, uh, finger was near the trigger when the person fell. It could have happened. So for safety, I wear body armor during the shoots. And also, yeah, since I'm a tactical good. reviewer, I yeah. review it. I have a lot of hours running and gunning in all types of body armor. One of the options I'm showing you right now, that is from Diamondback Tactical, and they didn't make it. I think they just have it made for them. That's called the FAPC. That stands for Fast Attack Plate Carrier. Soft body armor, and that's level 3A XL size. I reviewed that, I think, back in 2009 with you guys in a body armor video, which I have since pulled. And the reason I pulled it is because it was inaccurate in some ways. Because in that video where I talked about this soft armor, some rifle plate, I addressed it primarily to my military and law enforcement guys. And that's not exactly accurate because you as a civilian, don't know if you know this, but you should, and that's a one of the points for this video, can legally own body armor. That's right. Hopefully you knew that. If you don't, you know it now. And that's as the law stands in early 2013. Things can change. So if you want to integrate body armor into your system, whoever you are, LE, military, responsible civilians, now's the time to do it. Because they probably, I'm talking they, the protectionists, will probably make it illegal for you to own body armor sooner or later. I've already given you a good reason why I personally own it, and that's for safety at the range. I absolutely recommend, uh, if you're shooting around people that you don't shoot with very often, you don't know what their skill levels are, their experience levels are, like I do frequently, armor up. I mean, if you were to take a round in the chest at a shooting range, anywhere in the vitals, um, honestly, where we shoot out there in the desert, I don't know if you know we could stop the bleeding. We could get you to the hospital, or let's just talk me, or I could, you know, get to the hospital in time. To me, it's a safety issue. And philosophically speaking, you knew that was coming, right? What if you own a gun? Okay, I think it's funny guys will own a firearm, whatever type, for self-defense, and they don't own body armor. And they think it's kind of crazy to own body armor. I have talked to a few individuals like that. And to me, it makes no sense at all. Because if you own a firearm, you're acknowledging the fact you may have to shoot in self-defense someday. Maybe not. I hope not. And the other part of that equation is you just may get shot. So it behooves you to armor up and to have a second chance. Miss. You know, if you're taking rounds in your body armor, it's a clue bird to you that your cover sucks and you need to change. But at least you have a chance and you can get up and fight another day. So to me, it's a second part of the defensive equation. Firearms, defensive body armor. Now, the purpose of this video is to, one, talk a little bit about philosophy. I'm not going to spend too much more time on it about that and then I'm going to show you what I think are extremely viable options for you the civilian sheepdog LE pro-constitution military to use 
One is in front of the camera I've been showing you all along, and that is a soft body armor insert. Why do I run these and instead of rifle plate? Well, that's a good question. And this will go back to my 2009 video, which again, is gone. This is why. Check this Mamma Jam out. That's some bitches, eight pounds for one plate. Now granted, this is standalone level four rifle plate. This particular one is made by Max Pro. And it's shaped well. This is called shooter's cut, by the way, where it's radius on the corners right here, so you can actually bring your arms up and shoot. That's eight pounds, dudes. So you're gonna run two of those, one on the front, one on the back. In this carrier, you're looking at a 16, 17 pound rig with no ammo, no flashlights, no gun, no pistol. There might be some situations where you want that, and that goes back to my old tried and proven firepower versus mobility equation, right? Maybe you want that protection. You're willing to trade off mobility. You're in a static location. You're not running. You're not going from one location to another. Then this option would be good. Notice how that's contoured, by the way, to ergonomically fit, you know, the human chest, more or less. But the reason I'm not running this, obviously, is weight. It's too darn heavy. And, and honestly, I don't need level four protection. You know, I don't know, 95% of the time. Subject to change. So I run level 3A. Now, for you guys who are new to body armor, I'm talking maybe a little bit of jargon. Body armor is rated in levels, obviously. And you can go ahead and Google that information if you're interested. The only type I really will run is level 3A and level 3 and level 4. 3A is this soft armor insert and it will basically stop any pistol, not rifle, but pistol bullet fired at you. Okay, so it will stop 357 mag, 44 mag, 357 sig, which is a really hot round. And it will save your life. But this is a soft armor insert. And so what you're going to have with those rounds is you're going to have some blunt trauma. So the round will be stopped by the material, and, and there's all types of different ballistic materials they'll use in soft armor. I'm going to concentrate mostly in this video on hard, hard armor, and trust me, I'll get there here in a sec, but i got to lay the foundation. So this soft armor insert, I forget if it uses Kevlar, Dyneema, whatever, the round will hit here. It will deform into your body. It won't penetrate this material, but it's going to create some blunt trauma and that can be serious. It can crack bones, it can do some damage internally. And so usually on top of soft armor, you're gonna put what's called a trauma plate over at least the heart area. And that's where we get to something like this. So I have a three level soft armor insert, it won't stop rifle, remember that. We're talking pistol only, but that's probably the preponderance of what you're gonna come across is pistol rounds. And then you'll throw something like that over it. This is a Gauls Police Supply 8x10. They call it a special threat plate, and it is awesome. But as you can see, it doesn't have the coverage that this one does here. It's very lightweight, relatively affordable at around, I think, 180, 170 bucks. No, it's, it's not free. No quality body armor will be. They're always going to have a price attached to them. That's just the way it is, dudes. I can't change that. That's a system right there. Now, we actually have greater than 3A capability with this system, and we have trauma protection over a large portion of the soft armor. You would, as you sit it in this plate carrier, have to situate it in such a manner that this doesn't drop down, right? So you might duct tape it with some Gorilla Tape, fasten it like that, it's kind of a makeshift. And I've done that. I've duct taped my trauma plates on my soft armor inserts for years, and it works fine. You just want to position it where you think you need it positioned. But the downside of soft armor inserts are blunt trauma. And so you're going to have to put a trauma plate on it. The upsides are a lot in that they're, they are very comfortable. They bend with you. And so as this is still a shooter's cut. You can see it radius on the corner. So as we come up to aim our pistol, we have room to do so. Comfortable. They flex with us. And they move with us. Um, they are lighter weight than most hard armor options. These are. So, huge thumbs up for that. 
I have found something actually nowadays that even beats this. And here we go to the crux of this video, the crux. When I went to SHOT Show 2013, this was one of my goals for you, my beloved subscribers to the Nut and Fancy Project, to find you cutting edge body armor for the most effective value I can get. And this is what I came up with. I searched the showroom floor. And by the way, you're gonna see released with this video, the booth review from, from this company. And I had to sit on it for a couple months until they were ready to ramp up the production for potentially orders from TMPers. No lie. Welcome to the tabletop review of DKX by Nut and Fancy. What you are looking at there is the equivalent of this, but in hard armor, which provides 100% trauma protection. So if we take around here, we don't have to worry about breaking a bone anywhere along the periphery or anywhere on this plate. And you can see it's shaped again for the human front or back. This can go on the front or back, although this is a rectangular plate, 10 inch by 12 inch, not shooter's cut like this is. And it will stop everything pistol wise. Specifically, this one is rated to NIJ 010. Let me say that again. 0101-06 or the 06 OT6 standard as it's known in the industry. Specifically, in case you ask, again, Google this if you want more information. I'm not going to go over it all, but this will stop nine millimeter plus P plus 127 grain SXT at 1246 feet per second, 357 mag FMJ 125 grain at about 1500 feet per second. 44 mag, 240 grain at 1430, 357 sig at about 1470, 125 grain round, and pretty much any other pistol round. This is a 3A plate, and it's called the DKX Max 3A, I think. And this is a current production sample. They may label it better as it goes on. Another good thing about this, and I want to talk about capability, that's what we're talking about now. And then I'm going to go down to weight, comfort, durability, and value. Is the weight. This one, the rectangular one, only weighs 20 ounces. 20 ounces. Wow. Now, if you go with the shooter's cut, this one right here, that's a shooter's cut. This sucker is 18 ounces. And I think it's lighter than even this. A soft armor 3A insert, which is universal to go into your plate carrier. That to me is a huge achievement. Look how thin it is too, guys. Look at that. Now, if you were to compare it against, I showed you the trauma plate from Golf. It's very similar. In fact, it's identical in thickness. It's the same technology. I'm not sure where I put that. I'll find it. But it's extremely lightweight and easy to integrate into your LB systems. If you've been watching that in Fancy Project for any length of time, Perfecting your systems, your preparedness systems, you should have LBE already. You should have a plate carrier. Maybe it's a 511, maybe it's a Condor, maybe it's a TAG, or any of the other ones I've reviewed, like the Shellback Tactical. If you're in a WROL situation, you definitely need to put your armor on. From me to you, as a friend. And for you to wear that armor day in, day out, it's going to have to be comfortable and lightweight just like these DKX Max 3 plates. Extremely thin, they'll conform to your body. I put this one on the front because it's shooter's cut so I can shoot my pistol. This one goes on the back and I have my important parts protected from pistol fire. To me, that's just smart. It's the other half of the equation. I mean, seriously, 20 ounces? Wow. Others are generally, and there are other 3A plates out there, but they're gonna be more. The lightest one I could find, a above this was 24 ounces and I'm talking looking at shot show hours and hours online researching yeah dude awesome now it's not going to be quite as comfortable as this because it's a hard armor option this is a soft armor option again it conforms to your body it's comfortable not stiff but remember the trauma protection or the blunt force protection I should say so you don't have that this is hard armor so it's not going to flex but it's so thin if you get the right cut you'll love it 
the weight is phenomenal. Now let me show you another option too. So let's say you are in a higher threat situation that you're saying nothing fancy, really cool options, I love it. But I want three level three protection. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking rifle plate. So when we go to level three, go to level four, again, if you want the information, please Google it. You want to defeat your major rifle rounds. This won't do it. This is pistol, okay? Now, could you put two of those together and it would do it? Ah, I don't know. I don't think DKX has tested it that way. In fact, I'm pretty sure they haven't. Instead, you want to go with, yes, this is rifle plate video too. How about this? Also from T DKX, that is the Max 3 plate. That is rectangular, 10 by 12. Yes, it is kind of thick. And it is made out of a, a material called Dyneema. It's a polyethylene by a company, I think, called DSM when DKX orders it. And check this. Remember the rifle plate I just showed you? This Max Pro Level 4. Now, this is a Level 4 standalone, so basically it can stop 7.6251 or 30-06 or 30 out 6 AP armored piercing. That's capable. I mean, you need to ask yourself realistically, though, are you going to be facing armor piercing rounds? Probably not. So do you really need an 8-pound plate? Probably not. I recommend you go with a DKX. And I may have more options for you in the future, but this is the best, lightest weight one I can find. This plate, remember that other one's 8 pounds. This one, rectangular 10 by 12 inch, 3 pounds, 3 ounces. How's that? Wow, versus the 8 pounds I just showed you. And this obviously comes in shooter cut where it will be radius here. This would be the one you put on your back and you put a shooter's cut just like this one on the front. Whatever DKX, this very small company out of North Dakota is doing, they are cutting edge for now. Who knows, this may get thinner and lighter as the years go on, but this is state of the art. And if you're wondering, hey man, that is, that's thicker than that level four. You're right, it is. But having ran around with it and shot with it, you won't even notice it. Not really. Because it's so light. Weight is everything. Not everything, but usually. How about comfort? Well, like I told you, let's go back to the Max 3A, and I hope I'm saying that right. It's the pistol ones. These are a quarter inch hard armor. And the cool thing about it is, is these, let's go back to this shellback tactical plate, uh, plate carrier. Notice I carry horizontal pistol as I have for years. When you run this, it provides a rigid platform for that pistol. So this becomes just really stiff. And so you can mount, your magazines aren't going to flop around, any attachments you put up here, pistol's not going to flop around. I love that. Whereas you go with a soft armor insert, uh, you may have to put a stiffening plastic plate in there, which I've done with certain rigs. Comfort's excellent but you don't need a trauma plate with this one, like I said. So, and it provides that trauma protection all around. So that's just awesome. Now, there's some other ones that here in the Nut and Fancy Project we've looked at, we've acquired just by way of reference. Here's another company. This is called LTC. Don't get too wrapped up about the company. Um, look at the price. That's generally in the ballpark what you're going to be paying for this type of technology, the lighter weight one. This is an LTC composite level three plate and it weighs three pounds, five ounces. So almost the same weight, just a little bit heavier than the DKX. My point being is there's some other good plate options out there, but I think I'm gonna save you some money with the buying power of the Nut and Fancy project. Now, if you're asking, what does level three do? You mentioned rifle plate, Nut and Fancy. What exactly? We'll take a look at the DKX capabilities. I'm going to roll in some footage here of what they were shot with. We're talking 762 FMJ, 147 grain, 2780 feet per second, multiple hits that stopped them all. No spalling. Spalling means something's coming off the back of the plate as the round goes through and tries to penetrate it. Maybe it's a chunk of ceramic armor, which some of these plates will be. This is a polyethylene composite, or I should say just Dyneema plate. No spalling. 
no penetration. That doesn't mean you won't have some deformation on the backside. You will. A little bit. But not a lot. So it stops that. It stops a 7.6239. That's an AK round. 122 grain FMJ. Nine times is what DKX shot their plate with by way of reference. Dude, if you're getting shot nine times, it's time again to find better cover. It's a hint bomb. Your cover sucks. 30 out 6, 150 grain power shock. Did not penetrate the DKX Max 3. 5.56, five, that's AR-15, M4, M16 round, 55 grain FMJ, multiple hits, no penetration. So, I'm not the official voice. You'll have to make your own decisions, your big boys out there. If it was up to me, I wear level 3. This played exactly. Done. Am I going to go up against AP that is armor piercing? I hope not. I honestly don't have the physical capability to haul that much weight. I don't. I don't have the capability of hauling around and running all day long. A hundred pound, eighty pound load. Maybe you do. So there you go. Durability is outstanding. One of the problems you can get with a ceramic based level four plate, floor level four plate, if I can speak, or level three for that matter, if it uses ceramic technology, is if I drop this on the floor, I can have cracks in it and I have to go get it x rayed. That kind of sucks because I don't know if it still has the integrity to stop around. This, you can drop it all day long and it won't do anything. And wait, it gets better. This thing floats. How's that? If you, let, if you weigh yourself down with 16 pounds of rifle plate and you fall in the water, you think you're going to be able to swim with that? Plus all the other stuff you got on? You're going to drown, dude. It's that simple. Reference saving Private Ryan. These float. Seven year warranty on this Dyneema polyethylene rifle plate. I told you these things are styling. I mean, these are impressive, impressive plates. Let's talk about value. This one here, in either the rectangular clip cut, and we're back to the pistol plate. This is pistol. Standalone pistol. You don't need anything with it in order to stop all those pistol rounds we've talked about. TMP price will be around $165. That's pretty damn good. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Because this one, back in 2008 when we bought this, it was the same price and that's with military discount. Same price. So these two things are the same. Go try to beat that. This is for TMPers only. Guys who pay attention, you're going to score with that. 160 for that. And you don't even have to buy two. If you say, hey, all I need is front protection, just get this. Get a shooter's cut. And I'm ballparking. The price might be a little bit lower, a little bit lot higher. I'll tell you what, though. I twisted the arm of DKX, Evan and Company there in Bismarck, North Dakota. Big time to give you guys as low pricing as possible. I was like, hey, dude, I'm going to give you big publicity here in TMP. Hook up my audience. And by the way, we bought these. We were not given them by DKX. We bought them. As we do everything. So, there you go. I'm doing the best I can to give you a hookup. This one here, since it's level 3 rifle, higher technology, more expensive to produce, about 430 bucks. Yeah. That's about $25 less than you saw that LTC plate right here. This is from a police store. There you go. No tax. 430 Expensive? Yeah, it is expensive. Um, you won't find any cheaper currently. I mean, I looked around. Not for this technology. If you want to go with a ceramic heavy plate, yeah, you'll find some. You can find some used. Do you really want to buy them? I don't know when they're that heavy. Not me. Now, the buying process, once again, it's legal for you civilians. Shown at the top of the screen somewhere, I've been showing you my recommended supplier for the DKX pistol plate. That is the Max 3A and the Max 3 rifle plate. Get it while you can. That seller may require some type of identification from you. Just to know who you are. Is it required by law? Mm, no, but that's his prerogative. Okay, just to make sure, sell them to, I don't know, normal folks. That's his business, not mine. I would say the value is good 
It's not outstanding because 430 bucks for one plate is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. But it's 3.3 3 pounds, 3 ounces. And that's a rectangular. Shooter's cuts even less. So you, you're pricing your life, basically. And you're saying, hey, do I need it in my system? What I recommend to you guys, hands down, as a friend, is you get these. As a minimum, you get the DKX pistol shields, as I'm going to call them. The pistol shields. I mean, these are so light, so thin, and they're really affordable. And some of you guys may be asking, well, are you going to provide us a concealable soft armor solution here in TMP? The answer is I probably will, but to me, this is priority. Because to me, day to day, I'm talking to my civilians now. Do you really need to wall surround with this stuff in your daily life? No, you don't. This is when things go bad. You have a higher preponderance of getting shot. Maybe if you had a home invasion, you'd have your vest ready, ready to go, and you put it on as a safety. I think that's a smart idea. I'm basically talking about WROL, when all hell breaks loose. And then you need armor up, that the propensity of you taking some lead, much higher. I would like to see you guys run around with these. As a minimum. As a minimum. And this is the exact set I'd get. I'd just get a set for this. You already have LBE. Just put them in LBE. Later on, if I find a good vest solution I like that I think provides good value in technology, weight, firepower versus mobility, all that crap, I'll do a review on that. If you have money, get the rifle plate. Yeah, if you guys, you military guys watching this, if you have unit funds, purchase funds, I would look into this seriously if unit protocol will allow it. Usually it won't. They're going to tell you which body armor you're going to wear. But if I was hiking in the hills of Afghanistan... That is what I'd be wearing. I would not be wearing the dragon arm and all that other stuff that just weighs you down. Highly recommended. That's a nothing fancy review. Thanks for watching. Get it while you can. Out.